Think about your breath and how you can connect your body and your mind together. Listen to the sounds that you can hear. What can you hear that's soft? What sounds a little louder? Is there anything you're noticing now that you weren't noticing before? In some of the more remote or rural places that I've lived, I've had great soundscapes. We got to love hearing spring peepers. And, uh, and, and I think one of the places where I lived where I actually couldn't stay there because of the sounds was in California, right in the middle of a triangle of three highways. And 24 seven was this constant, constant noise. It made me just want to get out of that place and go someplace that had natural quiet. Just to calm my mind, like it kept my mind spinning. So I met researchers from the National Park Service's uh, Dark Skies and Natural Sounds Division. And they were in the process of creating continental scale maps of light pollution and of, of soundscapes. And as we were discussing um, the, the different data that they had collected to make those maps, we realized that actually having more sound recordings from residential areas would help improve those maps. And so that's when we first thought of the idea of having a project like Sound Around Town where um, we could collect sound recordings from backyards. Um, but we have some other objectives as well, because in addition to the sound recordings that happen, the volunteers do listening sessions. So that's where we can learn about people's perceptions of the sounds that they hear. So on the one hand, we have the acoustic environment, which are all the different sound elements that are present. And then on the other hand, we have how each of us interacts and responds and perceives those acoustic elements. That's our personal soundscape. That's how we experience the acoustic environment. Okay, we are going to Miss Betty Brody's house, Betty Jean Brody Thompson to do a deployment. What does that mean? We are going to set up some sound recording equipment in her backyard to measure the decibel level of sound. And she's also going to do some listening sessions where she'll go outside and write how she feels about the sounds that she hears. We are talking about trains, traffic, and then natural sounds like the birds, the entire sounds. We want to capture all of it dogs barking, kids screaming. <laughs> the hypothesis is that there's more um, noise, decibel level noise and annoyance noise in minority communities, which has a lot of health impacts that are mostly stress related, like heart disease and mental health problems and, and things like that, all kinds of stress related health illnesses. Um, because minority communities are usually built near a lot of different types of pollutants and near like, you know, railroads and highways and things like that. I hear a, a bird, an owl. I hear calls. Um, I hear birds chirping. Some someone going hard on the drum set. Well, there's clearly talking, the construction, the cars, bikes. Yeah. 
I hear the sound of the highway. Building, um, air units. Skateboards on the ground, popping and snapping. You might hear like all of us cheer for like a friend or something. You'll hear like the skateboards like the smack background. into the brick or Thank smack into like smack the ground right there, which makes like a grinding noise. I hear the background of HVAC. <sighs> Low tapping from elsewhere in the building, just like people moving around. The bus, cars. I can hear a couple of voices. Manger. J'ai mangé. J'ai faim. No. What? Uh, oui. Oui. I say I'm hungry. <laughs> this is just how to turn off the recording device. And so that will be here for around five to nine days. This is Rochester Heights, and I'm one of the older uh, members that I've been out here for about 60 some years. So I'm very interested in what's going on in my community. When I got here, it was very, very quiet, and then we um, got bus service. We hear the sounds of the bus every morning, and we have motorcycles coming through Biltmore Hills pretty fast. I hear the sound of the train. Uh, I think that comes about, um, about 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning, I think. seems to be a lot of noise in there. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's 29 feet 9. It's measuring um, sound pressure levels, so just the volume levels. Traffic. Can kind of hear the water a little bit. Mostly traffic. <laughs> Since I've started the project, I've moved a lot. And everywhere I move, I'm always thinking about my soundscape and how it's affecting my health. I hear the sounds of like the electrical wires. I, I listen more and I'm trying to like hear where I am. It's like the sounds of traffic, the sounds of the AC, the ones that aren't measured as loud um, decibel wise, but they have a lot of harmful like health effects because they're so persistent. Some people might really uh, find calmness and pleasantness in hearing bird songs and other people might not, especially if those songs happen at four in the morning. Um, Whereas those other sounds, for some people who grow up in a city, might find it very pleasant. Um, the background sound of traffic and of like that constant hum of traffic because it's what they're used to. Whereas other people might find it really annoying. And yet, either way, we also know that there's certain sounds that are harmful to our health. So, so we might know that having that low frequency traffic sound actually does affect our concentration it has the ability to interrupt sleep and that kind of thing, have negative health consequences, but we might not all perceive it as being problematic. How do you feel about these different sounds that you're hearing in this space that we're in? I don't, it's not that bad. It don't bother me. Yeah, I feel pretty positive about it. I mean, the, the sound of the highway could definitely go away. <laughs> right now, it's, it's really punctuating an otherwise very calm time. I would say I'm pretty neutral. Like when I'm skating with my friends, I know when I hear a skateboard, like that's just, that's just like homies right there. Once the construction gets over, it'll be a lot better. So when you go out into like nature and you have a more natural soundscape, um, the animals kind of react to you. So like if you go outside and you're in a new place, like the birds will be quiet for a while until they get used to you and then they'll start back up again. But with like motorized sounds, like they don't care whether you're there or not. But that has been one of the things that I noticed between like a natural soundscape where, you know, there's lots of like birds and things and 
And then just the sound of traffic. It just never ends. Can you describe a really positive sound environment that you've been in in your life? I mean, any place in nature, really, like, like this place is. So you really just hear, like, chickens kind of milling about. It's just, like, natural sounds. A motorcycle run. I like to hear that. Like instrumental music, like classical music or post-rock music. Like a good clarinet player. My mother's voice, something like that, it's comforting. Or the sound of certain things cooking. Like just being on the ocean, hearing waves, like that's, that's where I feel most at home. The ocean's on the beach. Mm -hmm. Like the early morning bird chirping. It just makes you feel so calm. Make you feel good. Yeah. Especially or, the sound. Water on the beach, that's a relaxation. Yeah. At night, out in the country, where um, unless it's cricket season, it's just like a blanket of silence. The sound of a board smacking onto the ground, just like that. Greatest sound ever. I said, why would I'm a kid in the bush? Why you kidding?